A lot of people are excited about the new Game Maker Particle Editor and Audio Loop Points, and rightly so, because those are two very interesting and widely useful new features that Game Maker has added in the February 2023 update. But the third major addition to Game Maker this month, and the addition that I foresee myself spending the most time with because I'm me, is the ability to create surfaces with different data formats. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about the new surface formats. So over the last few years, I've made a couple of videos about how surfaces work in Game Maker, and in particular I made one a few months ago about how the data is actually stored inside them. And I'll have a link to that video in the video description, but to make a long story short, surfaces in Game Maker store each pixel as a series of four bytes, and that's going to be one byte for red, one byte for green, one byte for blue, and one byte for alpha or transparency. When you read those values out in a shader, they're all going to be normalized to a range between zero and one, so if the raw byte value is zero, it's going to be zero, and if the raw byte value is 255, it's going to be one. So in essence, the value that's stored for each color channel is just divided by 255. And for almost everyone who's ever used Game Maker, that's sufficient. But there are a few advanced techniques, and a few other things that you might want to use surfaces for, which could be made a lot easier if you had the ability to encode color values in a surface that were either outside the range of 0 to 1, or that had a greater degree of precision than 8 bits per, uh, per, per color channel. And that's what these are for. Think about things such as shadow mapping or deferred rendering, which I've made videos on in the past. Think about things such as um, HDR and bloom effects. And that's what the new surface formats are for. So this time around, as it happens, reading the release notes for Game Maker actually tells you most of what you need to know. And if you've seen these, um, if you've seen these comments on the release notes, you pretty, you have a pretty good idea of uh, how this is going to work. So I'll get to working in Game Maker in a minute, uh, but I'm going to actually linger on the release notes for a few minutes first before I do that. Surface underscore RGB8 uNorm, that is the surface format that we've been using in Game Maker since the Neolithic. That is going to be 8 bits per color channel, so 1 byte per color channel, and they're going to be uh, normalized so they have a value between 0 and 1. Uh, we also now have, for example, surface underscore R16 float. So in this case, we only have a, a red color channel in the surface that we're encoding, but we can store a 16-bit floating point number in it. This allows you to store, instead of 8 bits per color channel, which the GPU interprets as a fraction between 0 and 1, this allows you to store a single 16-bit floating point number, and while a 16-bit floating point number doesn't afford you a ton of precision, I will have the range of what you can store in a 16-bit float on screen right now. It can be useful in a lot of situations where you're more interested in encoding data in a surface than you are in encoding actual color in a surface. Hey. Next, surface underscore RGB A16 float. That is the same thing, but instead of a single 16-bit float, uh, you get four 16-bit floats. And as before, these are not normalized, so these values are not forced to have a value between zero and, and uh, one. This, I believe, is the surface format that comes in handy when people want to do HDR bloom effects. Uh, next, we have surface RGBA4 uNorm, so that is similar to the uh, the default surface format of RGB8 uNorm, except uh, the uh, the amount of the amount of precision you get is reduced. So you only get four bytes per color channel instead of the usual eight. If you want your game to look like it uses a retro constrained color palette, that might be useful. Uh, bear in mind that not all devices might support RGBA4 uNorm. I know a number of people had trouble with that on the Discord when this first came out. And there are a handful of others. So surface underscore R8 uNorm, you can probably guess how this works. This is like the default surface format, except instead of four color channels per pixel, we only have the red channel. Surface RG8 uNorm, same thing, red and green. Surface R32 float, this allows you to store a single 32-bit floating point number on a surface. Um, the, uh, the release notes say that R16 float is used for storing depth as its recommendation, but I actually would prefer R R32 float because of the extra precision. And surface underscore RGBA32 float. So that is going to be four color channels, and they each have uh, 32 bits in which they can store floating point numbers. So that's going to be the... Um, creating a surface with this format is going to be the largest. It's going to take up the most video memory, but you can also store an awful lot of data in it. So that's an explanation of what all these do. I'm not going to go and demonstrate them all in this video. Um, I don't want to bore you all, but I do have the old surfaces and buffers example that, um, that I made a number of months ago. And I'm going to, I'm going to dive back into this and I'm going to create some surfaces which, uh, 
which are going to use some of these surface formats, and we're going to read out the data and see what we get. And we can talk a little bit about, a little bit about what we might use them for. So let's see. I think I might. Let me make a new branch on GitHub. And that way I can keep these changes separate from the initial version. That's 2023.2. Also, before I do anything else, I did mention briefly that some surface formats may or may not be available on all target platforms. Uh, there is a function surface format is supported uh, to which you can pass in one of the new surface formats. Um, surface, uh, for example, any one of these, R16 flow, R32 flow, and so on and so forth. And you can just do this as a quick check uh, to see if a particular surface format will work on a particular platform. And uh, if the answer is no, then you might consider going and uh, implementing some kind of backup plan. Like I said, I know that RGBA4 uNorm had some issues when it first came out uh, with being available and caused the game to crash in strange ways, but with that aside, all of the ones that I've played around with have worked, uh, at least on Windows, so I would um, not anticipate too many compatibility errors. Anyway, uh, if I go service R8 uNorm, and I'm going to comment out everything below when we're drawing the surface for now, just because I don't want the game to crash, because it's gonna, it's gonna not work. Uh, so the way this demo works is we have the original spray on the left, and we have the surface on the right. And I didn't have to do anything to the shader. I didn't have to mess around with anything in the shader to get this to simply work, even though it contains no green, blue, or alpha channels. And all we have here is the red channel. And if a surface that you're rendering to or a surface that you're drawing on the screen has no color information of a particular type, so if it's only red or only red and green, then the other two color channels, blue, alpha, green, whatever it happens to be, th those will just be zero. And you don't have to do anything special in the shader to make that work. And likewise, when you're doing something with one of these surfaces that uses a funny surface format in the shader, you don't have to worry about uh, whether or not a uh, surface format is normalized or what its range will be. Uh, when you sample from a texture or when you say GL frag color equals whatever, then the system will take care of that for you. And if I were to get rid of that, and if I were to change this to something like R16 float, uh, it's still going to look the same. Uh, it's going to look like we just have red and red and black, uh, since black is really the absence of color in this case. And it doesn't matter what the surface format is. Whether or not this looks the way you want it to with whatever you're trying to do with these surface formats is um, another question entirely. But your game shouldn't, for example, crash if you use a surface format that um, is something other than the default one, assuming that it's supported on your, uh, on your device anyway. All right, now with that said, let's start looking at the values that you're actually going to find in these surfaces. So let's go with, um, all right, let's go with R16 float, uh, and we'll start with that. So I'm going to uncomment all of this. Um, I am going to uh, have to change, or at least I'm going to want to change uh, this buffer create line here. So previously I was creating a buffer of size surface width times surface height times four because uh, with one byte for red, green, blue, and alpha, there are four bytes per pixel. Um, now I can get away with just saying the width times the height times two, because the uh, the surface format is just a single 16-bit floating point value, so that's going to be two bytes in total. Um, there is not, as far as I know, a surface format uh, get size function, which would just give you the um, just give you the the pixel size. Uh, for any given surface format. It would be kind of nice. I might make a feature request for that. But you might want to keep that in mind if you ever do a lot of going back and forth between surfaces and buffers. Uh, this will also consequently have an effect on the amount of video memory that your surface uses. Surface underscore R8U norm will take up 1 16th the amount of video memory as surface RGBA32 float, uh, for example. But, all right. So, um... So if I were to, uh, to comment out everything past the first line, and if I were to simply uh, read out the first four bytes from the surface and display them on the screen as I had in the first demo, and if I were to run the game now, uh, you're going to see that we don't have the same values as before. So these are essentially values that are meaningless because the um, this is not how the color is being stored anymore. Uh, the color is being stored as a series of 16, 16 bits, 
So instead of reading out an unsigned 8-bit value from the uh, from the surface here, I'm going to want to read out a 16-bit uh, 16-bit float, and that's uh, I'll leave the others alone for now because uh, that's the only one we care about. And if I were to display this on the screen, uh, this is going to give us a value between 0 and 1, because it is a, this value is not divided by 255. Um, if I were to multiply this by 255 and floor it to round it down, uh, then you would see that our first color is going to be stored in this 16-bit uh, floating point value as 252. And our original color is 253. Uh, with a red value and there is a loss of precision there. If I didn't round it, you would probably see that it's going to be like 252.7 or something. Uh, 252.88, so my guess was close. And if I were to read out the second value, and I'm going to have to peak uh, from an offset of 2 instead of 1 because each of these values is now 2 bytes wide. And I really could be using the new string formatting features for this. Um, instead of concatenating strings this way, but um, our second value is 28. And if you were to read out successive values, it would go like that um, down the line. Now, uh, let's say that you actually wanted to store a value in the shader that was not uh, simply a color with extra steps. So let's um, string of 255. Oops. Uh, let me go and write myself a shader. And uh, I'll get to, uh, to making it do something mildly interesting in a minute. Um, let's see, I'm going to want a shader set. Uh... <clears throat> you know what, uh, just because this is where I'm going to go next, let's make uh, the, next, uh, the next example use a surface underscore RGBA16 flow. And consequently, the size that I'm going to need to initialize the surface to is going to be um, width times height times 8 because we now have 8 um, bytes per pixel here. So in the, uh, in the fragment shader, this is where we actually, you know, encode something to the, uh, to the surface by drawing it, by assigning it to gl underscore frag color. If you're using HLSL, this will simply be the output of the, uh, the main function. And uh, you know what, just for, uh, because I'm going to do this anyway, let me draw um, each of each of these values uh, to the screen. Because again, I'm going to need to do that anyway. Uh, if I were to run the game now, we are going to get the, uh, the color values just as they are um, within a range of 0 to 1. So 0 0.99, 0 0.78, 0 0.54, and the alpha at the end. So let's just assign gl underscore frag color an arbitrary value, uh, gl frag color dot red an arbitrary value of something like 100.0. And normally, if you were to try to do something like this, it wouldn't work because the, uh, the red, green, blue, and alpha are just going to be constrained between, um, between 0 and 1. But if you're working with one of the extended surface formats, this will not be the case. And you can see that when we, uh, when we read out the red data, when we turn the surface into a buffer and then read the data out of the buffer and draw it on the screen, uh, we've just got the number 100 here. Again, as I mentioned, no conversion happened, no normalization or anything like that. And you can use this to store any value you want in a surface RGBA 16 float, as long as it fits within a 16-bit floating point number. Uh, you'll also notice that all the, uh, the red channels in the surface when it was actually drawn to the screen were maxed out, because again, that value is constrained to between 0 and 1, so... The fact that all of them have a red value of 100 is kind of lost when you draw it to the application surface, and the application surface still uses the, uh, the regular surface format. And if you wanted to, you could assign red to like 100. You could assign gl underscore frag color dot green to something else. We can make this like 125.0. Uh, gl frag color dot blue can be um, some other number, 1337.0. Never going to get tired of using that um, number as a random example. And this is going to turn the entire image white because um, of the aforementioned reasons. But we can see that the first color, the values that we got out of the first color, are indeed uh, just encoded as they are 100, 125, 13, 37. 
Um, something funny is going to happen. If you try to encode um, something as the alpha when you do this, and this is an easy thing to forget, uh, because when you start encoding numbers that aren't colors in a surface, you start to forget that the computer still can't tell the difference between them and colors. And if you were to try to give these an alpha of something like 0 0.5, you're going to find that uh, we are still alpha blending all these, and all of a sudden the, the values that we read out are exactly half of um, of what went in, because we are still doing the alpha blending um, equation with the, the source and the destination and all that. And this can work in the other direction as well. So if you give it an alpha of something like, uh, let's give this an alpha of like 4.0, uh, we're going to find that um, all of a sudden all of our... Uh, all the values that we put in there have been multiplied by four. And this isn't something that would usually happen when you're dealing with colors, but you can uh, you can extrapolate these values uh, by alpha blending them with a value that isn't zero to one um, in addition to interpolating them. And that's an interesting fact, an interesting math fact. Um, it's not one that I can say I think I'll find useful very often. Uh, and if you are trying to do something uh, with a surface that involves uh, data such as depth or position or normals or HDR or whatever that isn't a color and you don't want to alpha blending uh, There is the old game maker function GPU sets blend enable and I always have to think about what the name is When I use this function and we can set that to false uh, when we're uh, when you're drawing onto the surface to prevent that from happening and We can set it to true afterwards so that uh, alpha blending continues to, to work with everything else and when I do that uh, we have written the values 100, 125, 13, 37, and 4 uh, to, the, uh, to the surface without any alpha blending happening. So that can be a good thing to remember. I don't think there is a way to set alpha blending specifically for a specific render target. And I kind of wish there was so that you could have one surface that is alpha blended and, and another surface that isn't uh, when you're dealing with MRTs, but... I'm actually not sure if the graphics API would even let you do that. I've never heard of anyone um, saying such a thing is, is supported. So that's all I'm going to do here. I know that this video has been more computer science heavy than even a lot of my other computer science oriented videos, and I hope that didn't turn anybody off. I've only really showed off R16 float and RGB8 16 float here, but uh, from here you should be able to figure out what you can do with all the other surface formats as well. I do want to, at some point, and hopefully not too long from now, I do want to make update videos to my shadow mapping uh, video and to my um, my deferred rendering video, um, in which I do use the new surface formats to make some of that slightly uh, easier. And for deferred rendering in particular, I actually uh, recently posted a an episode of Follow Along Game Dev where I did go into using uh, RGBA32 float for uh, encoding world position. So if you're looking for a practical example, I will have that linked in the video description as well. But I'm going to end this off here. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code that was used here uh, for this example, this is admittedly not really code that's going to be useful in a game. But since the project is already on GitHub uh, from the previous video in which I did this, I will have this one linked as well. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one follow along let's make a game, the aforementioned 3D wizard game using deferred rendering. So if anything like this appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gamer Player, Harold Guidry, Manta Ray, Project 103, Rowdy Coder, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, V Tro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.